kicks off the, uh, the project. Uh, I'm gonna, the, the agenda is essentially uh, a little bit of a lecture, uh, and then mostly small group exercises. Uh, you don't really want to hear me talk, I don't want to talk, um, and, uh, but we are really want your feedback. So um, before the team gets started, I want to ask Josue um, to uh, say a few remarks, or Brian. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, you start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a new village manager. Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Josue Salvador, the village manager. Uh, thank you for taking time out of the evening to join us today. This is a very important event, as you know, where we're moving things along. And this, your input in developing the comprehensive planning plan is critical to shaping our plans, embarking on development opportunities here in Yellow Spring. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, please continue to be engaged because this is really where the input is critical and informs decision, informs our plans. Uh, so please get paid, spread the word, bring your best ideas forward, and yeah, thank you. Thanks, so, Josue. Yeah, I just want to say, um, you know, things are exciting in the village right now. And, uh, you know, I remember, you know, several weeks ago, I loved Megan's article where she mentioned several times Josue's comment about shaping our future. And, you know, for me, I think it's really important that, you know, if we want to maintain the amazing, welcoming community that we have, we can't just stand still. We've got to think about how we move things forward. And uh, change is never easy, but uh, there are a lot of things and a lot of opportunities that we have in Yellow Springs. You know, creating plans means that we can then go after grant funding to actualize those plans. And uh, I'm really excited. This is an amazing turnout. And, uh, you know, I love. Whoever did the marketing stuff, was that you guys? Yeah. Wow, that was really cool. I mean, you know, we are trying to get better about our communications. We're, you know, trying to, you know, think about how we, you know, maintain the village of Yellow Springs and uh, everything that we do. And so I really appreciate the participation. And, you know, I want to, you know, recognize that we're all about listening, absorbing, and you know, trying things out so that we continue to move forward with community development, with economic development, and everything else that matters uh, to our community. So thanks for being here, and uh, I'm excited. <coughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so just a little bit about the team. Uh, so there's a there are three consultants working on the project. Uh, myself, we planning insights. That's my firm. Uh, we are local. Um, Jose is with uh, MSP Design. My name's Jose Castronona. I'm a landscape architect with McGill's Smith Company. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, allowing our team to help you out with this exciting uh, project. And you used to live in the Dayton area, still visit uh, Yellow Springs a lot, so I, it's kind of neat to, to be working with you guys. So it's kind of kind of fun to maybe go hang out at Young's Dairy or something later. So, you know, well, it's kind of nice to have this kind of turnout. So I appreciate it uh, and look forward to working with you guys. The other member of the team is uh, LJB, uh, which is a engineering firm that's had a long-term relationship with the Village of Yellow Springs. Uh, they're uh, working behind the scenes on the project doing uh, a lot of the mapping and GIS work that will be integrated into, uh, into the final plan. <laughs> 
So today, um, we are here to facilitate the process, uh, but it's your plan. It's not our plan. Uh, we will be writing what you tell us to write. We will be, pri we will be uh, prioritizing the categories as they come out of this process. We are here to drive the process along um, where we can interject our professional experiences, we will, um, but this is your community, your plan, your future. And so that's where we want to, that's our role. So today, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the uh, current comprehensive land use plan, talk about existing conditions. You probably know it, you live here or you work here, uh, so I'm not gonna dwell on that too much, but just a little bit of context. Um, then we will have, the bulk of it are two exercises. One is, uh, and they're all in groups or individual, however you'd like to do it. One is to talk about, think about the future of Yellow Springs, uh, the good, the bad, the opportunities. Uh, and then also a mapping exercise where you really get down into the weeds. So the way the process is going to work is, this is the first kickoff meeting. This really is, is kicking off the process of which we anticipate uh, to be about six months. We will wrap this up March or April. Uh, we are starting with a high level discussion today and on the website, which I will show you. And then as we move basically month to month, we will progress deeper and deeper into the details and get feedback at each step of the way. There is a steering committee that is guiding the, price, the process along with village staff and uh, consult team. Uh, if there are members of the steering committee, could you stand up just so uh, people can see you? Uh, we attempted uh, to get a well-rounded group of uh, residents, business owners, um, young, uh, young folks, just to get a good cross-section of the village. Uh, there will be a series of focus groups that we will be facilitating to really get into the, the, the crux of some of the details. So we'll be talking to housing developers, uh, Antioch College, uh, business owners. Um, those are one-on-one -on -one small group discussions that um, we intend to have frank conversations about current issues and then also the future and hopefully get at some of those issues that maybe people would be uncomfortable airing in a large public forum like that. But we really are trying to get uh, as much input as we can. Uh, there will be a number of community surveys, um, little quizzes to try to get at certain topics uh, and aspects. And then one of the most important items is the webpage. Sustainable community, uh, uh, sustainableyellowsprings.com. The, ultimately, this plan, or at least the current thinking, is going to reside online. Um, we are trying to avoid, there will be a written document, but we're trying to avoid writing another plan that sits on a shelf that only staff or planning commission or council reads that is not necessarily attainable or easily to, uh, readable by the, by the community. And more and more communities are going to online plans, it saves money. If you think about the comprehensive plan, it's a living document. It should not just be um, a snapshot of the time of which it was made, but, does, but needs to reflect how the community evolves. So sustainableyellowsprings.com is the website that I'll talk about. So let me go to it so you can see it. I, who's been to it yet? All right, good. Close. <clears throat> so, Transparent in this process, 
and to make it as easy for you to uh, engage and give us feedback uh, as you possibly can. So every uh, meeting that we have, agendas that we posted, presentations, draft documents will all reside on this uh, website. What's there right now is just the current plan and all of its attachments. Uh, so if you've not seen the current um, comprehensive land use plan or the various studies that make up the appendixes, they are all there for you to download and read. Some are larger than others, so be careful. The housing study, for example, is 450 pages. You probably only need to read the first 10. Um, that really gets to the crux. But uh, there are some big files in there, so just if you're paying for data, be careful. Uh, this is optimized for your phone. 50% um, of the people who will visit this website will do it via their tablet uh, or their phone, so we are cognizant of that. As we move through this process, uh, current plan will stay up there, but there'll be another, and it's already, it's not live, but it's developed in the background. The draft documents will, will start to appear. Um, if you've signed in and you gave us your email address, um, you will be uploaded into our contact list here, and this is how we're going to be communicating um, in addition to publicizing on the Village's Facebook page, in the Yellow Springs News, uh, various listservs or email serves. Um, I will put all your names in here, and you will get an email from, from us about the next meeting or any time the website's been updated. Um, we're not going to sell your information. You're not going to get spammed by me. Uh, it's going to be, you'll get one email every couple weeks or, or so, depending on uh, how the process uh, works itself out. So if you, what I would really hope you will is share this information with your social network so that we can get as many people uh, registered on the website uh, in the contact form so that we can keep everybody uh, up, to, up, to, uh, up to date what's going on. But ultimately this will transition hopefully into a uh, really well done, easy to use website for, for the village. Any questions about this? Okay. So, um, you're going to see why I look like a doctor. Okay, so this is just an infographic I put together uh, this morning um, talking about you in the back. This is going to be hard to see. I, I recognize that. Um, this will be uh, updated on the website tomorrow. Um, your population growth is trending in the right direction. You had uh, about uh, one, one and a half uh, percent growth every year, at least through the census estimates. Uh, this is 2019 estimate at 3,500 uh, residents. Um, you know this, your median age is 50, which is uh, very high. Uh, you're getting older, uh, you're getting wealthier, you're getting whiter. Um, that's the trend of village. Um, and when I have read the documents that I have read, um, that seems to be a concern. Um, there's a recognition that um, there needs to be, uh, some of those trend lines need, should be reversed. The wealth isn't necessarily such an issue uh, as is there may be a, a diversity issue as far as you know, uh, making sure that this village is attainable to uh, all aspects of, of life. Uh, so your uh, median home value, according to uh, my data provider, Esri, is $29 or $230,000. Your uh, median family income is $75,000, which is significantly higher than the county as a whole. Um, one thing, that, that these are two indexes. There is a, you have a diversity index here of 42. Um, 100, so it's on a scale of 100. A 100 diversity index means that if you randomly selected two people in the village, you would have two different um, racial groups. So one white, one black, one Hispanic, one white, just randomly. Uh, you are, your uh, 42 is significantly low, uh, which 
is reflected in the studies showing the village getting uh, wider. Your housing affordability is a, index is a 146. 100 means that uh, an individual with uh, the average household income could buy an average house uh, and not be a cost burden. Uh, the index of 146 shows that there is an affordability issue here, that people are, uh, they don't have the incomes necessarily to support the, the expense of the house, so people, they become a house poor or they are cost burdened, which means they're spending more than 30% of their income on housing costs, mortgage, rent, insurance, uh, and utilities. So, if you want some more of these uh, stats, I can certainly give them to you. I know in the back you can't see this, so I'm just kind of going to sit through uh, and get to more of the, the meat here. Uh, your trend lines are the, the one bright area of growth is that when you look at the uh, population, you're going to see it's trending more 30 and 40 year olds moving into the village. Um, that that's, seems to be your sweet spot, spot moving forward. So just think about this in the context of, of plans moving forward. Okay, um, let me turn on the lights. So you have in front of you um, a bunch of mass and a bunch of papers. So the first exercise is um, we, there should be a uh, double-sided sheet of paper. There should be eight to 10 on the table. Uh, it's not the ones with the dots. It is, uh, it is the other one. So everybody should get, a, uh, should get one copy of that. <clears throat> what I want you to do, is basically finish the seven sentences that are on here. So thinking about Yellow Springs, the best thing about Yellow Springs is X. Uh, second question is we need more of X. We need less of what happened. If you've taken a survey on the website, this is the same thing. Um, but thinking about the next five, 10, 15 years, what do you want to see the village become? What issues do you want to see addressed? Or where should we focus uh, on building on our assets, et cetera? Does that make sense? So after you, after you have time to think about these, um, we'll kind of report out. So I would say, you know, a half hour, 20 minutes, think about this, discuss. There are set, uh, refreshments in the back, uh, water, cookies, etc. And then the pens have the little, some of the pens have the little plastic dots at the end, so if they don't write, you don't want to. Yeah. And if you need the pens, let me know. I've got extras up here. You can do it individually, you can do it as a group, however you like. It's designed to be individual. Yeah. 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 There is a there if you go to the website, there is a vision document. Um, it's the Yellow Springs Miami Township vision document that, that lays out kind of the thirty thousand foot priorities for what the community wants to be. Part of this exercise is designed to confirm that those are still valid. Um, but since you're new, you don't have sort of the right. and, and for me to think about these questions would be for me to compare and contrast what the vision is and they would help shape the But the other good thing is somebody new is seeing if there's other vision Part of that other ideas that might so that's it's bring, okay and bring your past perspective from other places you've lived yeah yep. so where would that uh, information be if you go to the for this it would be on this website mm -hmm. yep all of that's it yep. correct yep Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so about five minutes. Okay. 
several years ago when we were thinking of building a house and I ran across one in the early 70s about house design, community design, city design, I can't remember his name. But when he went into the community college, our physical layout and the, the availability of actual shopping and stuff meets that criteria. I mean, we look at, when I look around, what I think of is we're sort of an Ohio version of an old traditional New England village. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And that, that's one of the reasons I think we get so many tourists. It's because they live in subdivisions and they're looking for that. That authentic experience. Yes. So is there any threat to that experience? Are there any yes. development pressure? <laughs> yes. Tourism itself. <laughs> Tourism itself. <laughs> the functionability of the village. The residents. Yeah, too much of a good thing. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm we're, we're close enough. <laughs> we're like the earth. We're close enough to the sun, but not too close. Close enough to Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati to attract those people, you know, on a short term basis but not to attract their big box stores, you know, right. Uh, right. I would like to say something about tourism because we need tourism and tourists are looking for a particular experience. I think we'd be cutting ourselves off at the knees to try to discourage tourism. I think we need to manage it. Right. Yeah. Which is probably we need to have events and and venues and things that are relatively small and intimate and would be that way. I don't think, you know, I think about porch fest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of events we should have. I'm not against street fair or the Shakespeare in the park or movies in the park. That is losing this. You need to have a life in a place that's big with this plenty of people scattered. Okay. So okay, what about this time? What about the best things in the village? I just said the community deal with everything I need to see. Okay, fair enough. I think Dave has a really good time to be here. Um, we have a really good need work. It's not totally shut down in that rush hour. Right. I think that really the best thing about the village is that it's close to the Glen. And all that land has been preserved. Mm -hmm. right. So I also want to throw in uh, 
schools of excellence. Um, I mean, I agree with everything else, but uh, that provides some really great opportunities for us. We also have an investment still in public spaces, the library, the pool, the parks, and even though they're a stressor in terms of cost, yeah. they're really significant part of how we live. Okay, sir. And I really want to come back and emphasize that tourism is not a problem. Tourism <coughs> makes Yellow Springs, we would not have a lot of things we have. I agree, everything needs to be managed, but people who see tourism as a negative, we wouldn't be Yellow Springs if it weren't for tourists. Am I right in assuming that the biggest issue is vehicular management? Yeah. Our, yeah. 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 Okay. Our harbor complains about it all the time. Gotcha. <laughs> The people. The people and the wealth of resources that the people bring. I remember when I first moved here, I felt like anything I needed to know that I came here would tell me how to do it. And that's still true. Close knit community. Well, yeah. It well, could be closer knit, but the wealth <laughs> of intellectual and artistic and passionate abilities. That exists in the people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the wealth opportunities that are here. It's the recreation, it's the theater, it's the art, it's the education, it's the glen, it's the nature, shops, restaurants, everything. It really, I can't think of another place that has the kind of package of everything that we have here. Okay. So, what, moving on to a different topic. What do you think would be the challenges that the community faces over the next five to 10 years? What are the biggest challenges? Traffic management, I heard. Infrastructure in general. Infrastructure, particularly in the face of rapidly accelerating climate change. Okay. I mean, how are we going to manage uh, the situation if we have huge rainfalls, for example? Uh, uh, are we thinking about uh, uh, having an adequate sewer system, uh, adequate uh, wetlands, adequate uh, areas where, uh, in, fact, in fact, the water can go without uh, flooding people's homes out? Okay. About what do you see as the biggest challenges? Antioch College. Antioch? Mm -hmm. the, the sustainability of Antioch? Okay. okay. It's a big landowner. Uh, and, and I would say a key icon. Of well, Antioch used to be the number one employer in town. So we lost a lot of tax base when they closed down and came back as small as they have. Okay. What are the challenges? We need to hire any jobs. Okay. Well, about staff or electeds, what challenges do you see? Housing. Lack. <coughs> New housing, affordable housing, affordable rent of all, all, all the above. Particularly rental. Moderate, the missing of the middle and the mm -hmm. You could add to that that we're an aging population, and um, as we age, where do we go? If we want to stay in this community. So I see uh, housing for seniors condos or so they can move out of their home somewhere so they can stay in the community. Is there a retirement community in the village? I don't know if I'll see you. There is. 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 Uh, the new demographic moving in is in the 30s. Really? So they come back after school with retirement now. They don't work here. They move here, they live here, they work at base, they work in the area. Yeah. Johnny or Denise, do you have any thoughts on uh, challenges? I, I agree 100% with your perspective. That's going to be our biggest challenge. Yeah. Um, I went to a similar exercise for City of Elmwood and two or three people in the audience, Devin, you were at that. Um, so they were asked, what would, uh, what would you like to be like? And 
two or three people in the audience said Yellow Springs. I don't know. I don't know. I believe that. Sitting on their kids' roads. Different races, more involvement. There's some way just mixing us up more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think long term financial planning. Like we've lived here like six years and it seems like consistently things come up that are relatively predictable as far as you know the age of buildings, whether it's a school building or a water plant or whatever, but we've done nothing to, you know, save funds for these things. So they're all just like, we have to do this right now, you know, and pay for the whole thing. Um, because a lot of times things have not been maintained as they should be. Right. And we're in the middle of that. That's why infrastructure is such a big issue and other things. So growing the tax base. No, not necessarily growth, okay. just long-term financial planning. Okay. I think growth actually is, I mean, within, not necessarily a bad thing, but I wouldn't say it's like the ultimate goal of the village is to grow. Okay. I think we need to find ways to support the businesses that are uh, for the residents and that they don't get um, Okay. Sir. We have a number of uh, public, private spaces that function as public spaces in Yellow Spring. We've already lost Kelly Hall. Um, on the I'm really concerned. I'm not a Presbyterian. I don't attend the Presbyterian Church. I'm really concerned about the future of the Presbyterian Church, uh, which is, in, I understand, under some financial stress. We have the Senior Citizen Center. We have a number of places, a number of venues in town uh, for which we rely on the goodwill of uh, the, the people who own and maintain those venues in order to support our expectations of quality of life. Um, I believe that, that when we think about financial planning, we need to think about how to make sure that we don't lose those. Okay. I'd like to add Mills Lawn to that list. Here? Yeah, yeah. this. Yes, I'm, you have know, yeah, the park area. Beautiful green space right behind here. Okay, right. Okay, yes. Well, I want to respond to we need jobs. I think, I've been thinking about this, I think what we need is people who work. Jobs are, are dying. And, and industrial jobs aren't paying. Most of the jobs are in the service sector. I would suggest we think about, in that 30 and 40 year old group is great for this, that we think about attracting people who, are, who work online either all or part-time, who are entrepreneurial online. I mean, there's a lot of people that have businesses straight through eBay and do a co-working yeah. kind of thing and, and sort of not just think about jobs. Think about bringing people in who work. Well, I travel all over the country and I work out of my house. Yeah, so, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, that's, that's that, that issue about supporting Entrepreneurism and, and either uh, jobs either work out of the house or, or small scale jobs. Making sure that that infrastructure exists within the village is brought up by the, uh, the steering committee, especially when it comes to like high speed internet access and affordable utilities and things like that. that was co working. Co working spaces, yeah. yeah. I work at the library a lot because you can only talk to your dog so much. Um, so, yeah. I wonder if there's a way to take a survey of the tourists that come to town. Um, I know when I go to Grover's, I have to put my um, zip code in there, or area code, whatever. And are they really supporting the shops? Are they supporting um, Morgan House? Are they supporting the um, hotels and stuff in town? Or are they just coming in from like, 50 mile radius coming and going. You know what you mean? They're supporting. They're, yeah, supporting. they're, they're definitely supporting our businesses. Yeah. Uh, but, but if they're in town, they're spending. They're walking the streets, they're spending. Yeah. Uh, Do you it's have really, information on the stores, though? I can give you any information you want on my store, on my store in particular. Okay. There is a business comes in weekends, our business is, is solid. 
during the week it's steady, but you look at Friday, Saturday, but Sunday. But I'm thinking of some stores that probably aren't doing so well, and I don't know if I want to mention them in public or not. Well, like an store. Uh, and the lodging tax, as far as overnight stays, the lodging tax is bringing in $50,000 a year, and that's 3% on the hotel, on the lodging of Airbnbs and, and hotels. So that is significant revenue to the village, and it's obviously significant revenue to those to those owners. Is that three percent stays in the village, or is that also due to the county? No, it stays in the village. So would that be something to look at? Is somebody would be willing to build another hotel around town somewhere? Well, that's what I was saying. Hire people, give people jobs. Yeah, I just wanted to suggest um, that there might be a business incubator that would supply uh, things like um, web design, marketing. Things that an individual doesn't necessarily have access to, but together could we could supply that to one another. And I think that that was a good idea about, you know, there are a lot of people who, who work at home or there's lots of artists. Um, and just having, um, you know, even the Yellow Springs, its own Etsy site or something, um, right. to, to band together and use um, to act. Anyway, you got it. All right, so moving on to the last question, uh, well, you have one time. Yeah, well, I just wanted to piggyback a little bit on what she said in that some visits in, in town may be negatively impacted by tourism. Immediately what comes to mind is, like Tom's Market, our local grocery store, their parking lot on the weekend is full, jam-packed. Once I get in the store, I've got the place to myself. You know, there's a handful of people in there, but Clearly, their parking is being impacted. That's impacting local residents' desire to go down and shop there um, on the weekends. I think the same could probably be said for the hardware store. You're less likely to want to venture into town if you see one or two little things. Right. So there are some businesses, I think, where uh, it, it does cut that way, especially if you're not you know, uh, selling food or drinks or whatever right. you know, that people typically are going to consume just because they've got to eat. So what about the opportunities over the next five, 10 years? I think we like what I would like to see with the opportunities is that you've got a blend of developing developing uh, housing, but you've got a blend with business. Um, I'm not talking about small, not mom and pop businesses. I'm talking like where at the CBE or you've got places like that where you can get a, a white collar or a high tech businesses that are going to come in there, which are going to be high paying, good tax dollars, and more importantly, live here, work here. That way you keep all the tax dollars in here and, and you get a double benefit off that. Those are the things that we need to drive towards to get a good blend of that to really bring our, our tax revenues up that can make us affordable, more affordable. Opportunities, sir. Uh, this is my job to say in Fresno close. I think if you let go of fantasy, you're going to be able to get YSI and Morris Bean back and jobs like that. Some other people touched on it, but we're not going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. So we need to stop trying to recreate the past and go back in time. Uh, I think that's one of, the, one of the things that gets in the way of people working together. It's impressive that so many people come together. One of the strengths of this town is that people do care a lot, but their expectations that Fantasies can be made real and it's going to be free and done yesterday by somebody else. And that's not the world we live in. We're not going to lower the housing prices. People want to live here, so it's going to be expensive. But the economics works on the outside world and comes in here. So some realism is needed. Back, back. Um, I think the community that you Millworks is an opportunity. I think the college potentially thriving is an opportunity. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. I think uh, one opportunity that often gets overlooked is the opportunity to make, to make the town more walkable. We have lots of areas where we don't have sidewalks, where you have to walk in the street. Uh, we have lots of areas where um, uh, homeowners, uh, landlords, allow their, um, their shrubbery to block the sidewalk so that you have to walk in the street. Um, we have, uh, it's hard to cross Dayton Street. Uh, once you get past uh, Stafford, 
that when the speed limit goes up to 35, a lot of people go up to 45. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very difficult to cross it. And, and you can't, if you can't, we're going to have a major accident at High Street because okay. of that the speed. So it's not just the cars. It's stuff that we could address by having lower speed limits on things like Hayden Street, by, by making sure that we actually build sidewalks where we don't have them, uh, and, and, and manage to keep the sidewalks clear so that, in fact, people with wheelchairs could go all over town. We currently can't do that. That's an opportunity to actually address that and, and, and uh, not just think about bicyclists, but think about pedestrians. And it's critical of an aging population. Right. Yeah. So related to that, the active transportation plan is on the website? It should be. If not, I will double check. Uh, it should be. And, and part of that is also our charge is to integrate the active transportation plan themes into the overall comprehensive plan update. Okay. That's a vicious cycle. you got an older community. If they're less healthy, they're not going to walk, they're going to drive. They drive, they clog up the road from pedestrians, they take up parking by cops, whatever it is. So you need a component in there where you try to get the people to, in groups, enjoy themselves walking every Friday night. I know it's not part of the land use, but it is. It is. So, yep. you know, that's critical. Other, otherwise, you've got to depend on young people coming from somewhere else that's going to drive up the housing prices. You, you had a comment on the back. Yeah. Um, you know, I think one of our opportunities, especially as people are talking about, you know, adding new businesses and other things, is to look back and say, how have we been successful in the past in growing businesses? Because the reality is, like every other rural current community, really, we have had to grow our own businesses here. The businesses that are in town have started here and have been successful here for a long period of time. No rural community just points to a cornfield or soybean field, and all of a sudden these big corporations decide to come and build there. That's just not how it works anymore. Um, largely, those businesses end up locating in wealthier suburbs, or they end up locating uh, in central business districts, because they're ta what they're looking for is a talented workforce. And part of the benefit of the community is also the negative of the community, that when you drop a pin here and draw a circle as far as people's commute, there's not a lot of people between us and the next you know, land of people or whatever. So we shouldn't sell ourselves on putting our eggs in that basket. In fact, we have tried that in the past and been unsuccessful. Instead, I think we should focus on creating businesses here locally. Okay. I do think we have actually been relatively successful in attract <clears throat> excuse me, in attracting a business that we intentionally went after because we knew it would be a good fit for Yellow Springs. That business has come, developed a large parcel of real estate, has opened up an opportunity for the rest of that real estate to be developed, has grown, has doubled in growth in size in, in a year, and is looking to potentially double in size again. So I'm not saying that, that, that we're necessarily going to compete with the Jobs Ohio things I get that, that are looking for you know, a large tract of land on the interstate, but I think we can be very intentional about going after businesses that actually do have an opportunity to grow and that fit within the values of Yellow Springs. How about an organic hemp farm? What? Organic hemp. Well, organic is the buzzword these days. Okay, one last comment. I think it's very important to remember that the main reason Yellow Springs is what it is today is because of Antioch College. Right. If Antioch College, if we can, if that comes back, the jobs we talked about, YSI, Renee, they grew out of Antioch. Antioch made that happen. If we can bring Antioch back, that's the best thing we could possibly do yep. for Yellow Springs. If everything else would fall out of the place. All right, we're going to end on that for this part. So the second exercise has to do with the maps. All right, so you have three maps in front of you. Uh, they're a version of the same thing. So you have the village map. You have a, you've got a map that is more of that town. And then you have a map of the village in a larger geographic context. 
you have three sheets of dots. Uh, red, we're going to use red, green, yellow. Uh, they correspond with the dot, the pieces of paper um, with the, the colored dots. So what I'm looking for, and this is a group exercise by the table. So let me borrow your sheets here. So on the green sheet, for example, uh, these are the community assets or areas you want to see develop. There is a number line, one through 18. Your dots are numbered. One through six, and I realize I forgot seven through 10, but you can write that in, uh, and 11 through 16. So for those areas you want to see preserved, or areas you think that would be good to be developed, your first one goes along with number one. So if it's a, I want to know a particular area, put it on the map, and give me a description about what it is that you're talking about. So the example who said, Mills Lawn. Lawn. Mills Lawn, that would be a great example to keep the park. Is there a more that says Mills Lawn? You have to write that in. But, or, uh, school, but it is a gathering spot. The red means that you want to see this preserved, or this is a do not build here. Uh, I think that's what I wrote.